This is Adam Malik Aaron Aaron and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today we're going to be talking about Jurassic World Dominion. So as usual we're going to be going over the pros and cons. So let's get to it. Pros. This is Jurassic Park slash World. It's Jurassic. The Jurassic series. I mean, <laughs> I really don't need to go into a whole lot of detail about it, but I might as well. So... This is the sixth movie in this series. This all started nearly 30 years ago with Jurassic Park, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. The whole gist of that movie is like a what if scenario. Like what if we were able to bring back dinosaurs through science and create a theme park surrounding it. But then everything goes horribly wrong. <laughs> That's pretty much the general gist of Jurassic Park. And it was the biggest thing of that decade besides Titanic. <laughs> In fact, Jurassic Park was the biggest movie of all time before Titanic came out in 97. It was one of the most iconic movies of the 90s easily. One of the biggest blockbusters of the 90s. It was a hell of a movie. Great movie. Still holds up to this day thanks to the like incredible... like. <laughs> effects you know done with the dinosaurs making them look as you know realistic as possible they didn't, this is back when they couldn't really rely too much on cgi because it really wasn't there yet or at least it kind of was there but we need a lot more time before it would look you know super convincing but in jurassic park it looks fantastic even now so yeah so yeah jurassic park Made a lot of money. So what do you do when a movie makes a lot of money? You make sequels. Duh. <laughs> and that's what happened. You had two sequels. You had The Lost World in 1997. And Dress Park 3 in 2001. And then 14 years of nothing. <laughs> and then we get Jurassic World in uh, 2015 which was a soft reboot where everything that happened in the other movies it happened but we have a whole new story characters it's basically a whole new jurassic series <laughs> that starred you know chris pratt and bryce dallas howard and that movie thanks to really banking on some hardcore nostalgia that paid off tremendously because that movie did crazy numbers seven years ago at the box office. It had the biggest opening weekend of all time, beating the first Avengers movie. Granted, it wouldn't hold on to that record for long because Force Awakens, another nostalgia-heavy, soft <laughs> uh, reboot of sorts, that broke the record. But still, Jurassic World, insane success. Made $1.6 billion. So obviously, you make more. Then we have Fallen Kingdom 2018, which despite being trash, it made $1.3 billion, one of the biggest movies of that year. So naturally you make another one. And here we are with Dominion. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, Jurassic Park, the whole Jurassic Park slash world, a lot of success you know, throughout its history, particularly its recent history with the Jurassic World movies. And even like Lost World, that had the biggest opening weekend of all time. It held that record for four years. It wouldn't be beaten until the first Harry Potter movie in 2001. So that's really impressive. And Jurassic Park 3, well, it happened. <laughs> but I'll I'll go over some of the other Jurassic Park slash World movies later <laughs> when we get to the cons. But for right now, Jurassic Park slash World has strong brand name recognition and that's an instant pro not to mention the recent movies have been super successful so that's a pro so that's pro number one pro number two the big selling point about this movie is the return of the three leads from the og jurassic park those three being laura dern sam neill and jeff goldblum Right, so obviously, well, many people have seen the original Jurassic Park. So when they see these three back together again 
on screen. They'll be like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. It's like a nice little moment, kind of like how you see like Luke, Han, and Leia in Force Awakens. It's like that, that type of effect. And that's the type of thing that will make people watch the movie. <laughs> so, yeah, having those three back here in a substantial in substantial roles, because I have seen this movie, they are in it quite a bit, particularly Sam Neill and Laura Dern. They're in it quite a bit. So, and Jeff Goldblum, he isn't in it as much, but he's definitely there. He definitely plays a part. He's a lot bigger than his role in Fallen Kingdom, where in that movie he was just a glorified cameo. Here he actually plays a role in the movie. But anywho, yeah, having those three in this movie, that's a pro. That'll get people to really watch it. So that's pro number two. Pro number three, competition. There is one, one movie that can be labeled competition. One real movie out there. Top Gun Maverick. That movie is doing insane <laughs> box office-wise. That movie had the lowest drop ever. For a movie opening over a hundred million dollars, that is crazy. The previous record was Shrek Two <laughs> back in two thousand four, that dropped like thirty three percent. That was on a holiday. From Top Gun Maverick, it fell like twenty nine percent post holiday. That's not normal. <laughs> and that's not normal at all. But yeah, that movie's still a threat. Obviously, it'll still make money this weekend, even with a Dominion. But besides that, there's really nothing. Everything else is old as hell. <laughs> like to the point where most people have seen a lot of these movies already. Like Doctor Strange 2 and Down Abbey 2 and Bad Guys and so on and so forth. <laughs> so, yeah. With the exception of Top Gun Maverick, there's really no competition. So that's a pro. Uh, another pro. It's Thursday Numbers. Are quite good. Made $18 million last night. It's the its numbers are right in between Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. Jurassic World leap got a little above 18 million. And Fallen Kingdom got 15 million. So it's in a good place. It's only a million dollars behind uh Top of Africa. Actually, let me show you this. Biggest previews. Okay. So we have real comparisons here. So yeah, about a million behind Top Gun Maverick. Not too far behind Jurassic World or Incredibles 2. It's headed Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and all of these. There's Fallen Kingdom right down there. So I say that's a very positive sign. That's the fourth biggest of the year. The number one is Doctor Strange 2. Nothing will top that. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's still very strong, and it pretty much guarantees that this movie is going to open above a hundred million dollars. So, how can anyone? How could that be labeled a con? So yeah, strong Thursday numbers. That's a pro. Another pro: this movie opened early overseas last week, and it was kind of a limited run. Like it didn't like open everywhere in every country. It opened like select few countries. And it did quite well. I mean, if you look, for apparently the data suggest it's on par with the other two Jurassic World movies when it comes to opening those specific countries. So that's a good sign. So yeah, that's a pro. Any other pros? Are there any other pros I can think? Of? Well, this movie's had a strong advertising campaign because, of course, it would. Why wouldn't Universal <laughs> push this? Although I do find it very odd that in like none of the trailers or like barely any like advertisements or like posters or anything, they don't show the title of the movie. They don't show Jurassic World Dominion. It's just like the logo of the T-Rex. And that's it. I think that's kind of strange. <laughs> that's an interesting decision. I guess they think, oh, the brand recognition is so strong, they don't even need a title. They'll know what this movie is. <laughs> the people know what this movie is, which I guess they're right, because the Thursday previews don't lie. So, yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird. But, 
this all big old advertising campaign. Everyone knows this movie's coming out. It's a big deal. It's bound to be one of the biggest movies of the summer. It's a quintessential summer movie. This screams summer, just like how Top Gun Maverick screams summer, which is a very good thing because we really didn't have too many movies like that last year. And don't even get me started on 2020, which was non-existent. So, yeah, strong advertising campaign pro. I think that's it now. Well, I guess this is neither a pro or a con. I might as well just mention this. Chris Pratt. Okay. I haven't... Have I covered any Chris Pratt movies here? I don't think I have. I'm going to check. When was his last movie... Well, I, I no, I mentioned him in Onward, which I don't know if that really counts. Well, I guess it counts, because I didn't make a video on that. So yeah, Chris Pratt, obviously he's a big draw. He's had a lot of success in the world of movies. He's part of Jurassic World, part of MCU as Star-Lord. So yeah, he's had a lot of success. I know there's, but there's been like this controversy online, like on Twitter all the goddamn time regarding like his religious beliefs and i don't look deep into that at all i kind of just ignore it because it's just sounds like a bunch of nonsense but i don't know i don't think that's gonna hurt this movie it's clearly not but i just wanted to mention that so uh yeah okay cons okay the big con for this movie um is its reviews are pretty bad <laughs> it's at 34 percent last i checked on rotten tomatoes which is makes this easily the worst uh rated jurassic park slash world movie of all time <laughs> which is kind of surprising because i've watched the movie my, my expectations were rock bottom <laughs> okay i was not expecting anything good <laughs> out of this movie but I watched it, and at the end, I was just like, you know what? It was okay. This is fine. It's not great, but it's not horrible. I don't think it's as bad as its review score. It's certainly better than Fallen Kingdom. That movie is hot trash. <laughs> okay, that movie legit pissed me off. This didn't. I was just merely okay with it. I was fine with its existence. <laughs> so... Yeah, but still, like, reviews are pretty bad. Pretty bad. No one looks at 34% and is just like, oh, hell yeah, I gotta watch that. <laughs> Although the audience score is a bit better. I think it's, like, 79%, which isn't, like, super ideal, but it's fine. And, yeah, so reviews are not good, so that's a con. Another con is that the last Jurassic World movie, uh, Fallen Kingdom... It's not very good at all. It was horrible. I I remember watching it back in 2018, and that it no joke had one of the most infuriating endings I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> I it I was fuming <laughs> at the end of the movie. I don't do that often where I legit pissed off at the movie. I mean that's only happened a few times since Fallen Kingdom. That happened with. Rise of Skywalker, that happened with Morbius. Um, so it's rare for me to get like legitimately angry. But Fallen Kingdom did it. <laughs> it, gr it really grinded my gears. But yeah, I thought for sure that movie's lackluster reception would hurt this. Doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> but I just wanted to mention that. And besides the fact that Jurassic Park world whatever you want to call it the jurassic series as a whole it's been very meh across the board i mean like the first movie is great lost world disappointing did not live up to expectations jurassic park 3 not good it did have some hilarious moments how who can forget the raptor i think it was a raptor you know who's saying alan <laughs> That was a classic moment. <laughs> um, Jurassic World was fine, albeit extremely derivative of the first movie. Fallen Kingdom was terrible. <laughs> and this, I think, is fine, although a lot of people disagree. 
So yeah, this is real all over the place. So when it comes to quality, so yeah, very very inconsistent when it comes to quality. But again, doesn't seem to be hurting its box office. But I just wanted to mention that. So that's a con. Um, when it comes to competition, I already mentioned Top Gun Maverick. That's still making money. That might make a bit of a dent in this or uh, vice versa. I don't know. But, um, yeah, like, that's going to be a problem. And the next week will be an even bigger problem because you got Lightyear coming out. And that should do big, that should make big money. That should print money. And that's not good for this movie. Although next week is Father's Day. And this is the perfect dad movie right here. Well, Top Gun Maverick is too. So both of those should do really good next Sunday. So those second weekends won't be too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's like real short term competition. I mean, after that, it's a lot, a whole lot of nothing extreme until like Thor Love and Thunder. But that's not till like July. So it should be fine. <laughs> But yeah, for right now, Top Gun Maverick and Lightyear are this movie's biggest problems when it comes to competition. But yeah, I might as, might as well label that a con. Um, there's another con is that Universal, this this year has not been very good <laughs> for Universal. They've had a lot of bombs on their resume. They had 355, um, Redeeming Love, Marry Me, Ambulance, all tanking hard. Um, the bad guys did okay, and Down Nabby Two underwhelmed. Well, that was like focus feature. It's, it's a, a part of Universal. Northman bombed. So it's not been great, but this should change everything. This should reverse their recent misfortune. But still, I wanted to mention how Universal's year has not been very good. So that's a con, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. So. Opening weekend, let's compare this to the other Jurassic Worlds, shall we? Um, Jurassic, okay. Alright, so it's kind of pointless comparing it to the original trilogy. It really is. So, we got the newer one. So, Jurassic World opened with $208 million. It made $652 million domestic, one point almost 1.7 billion worldwide fallen kingdom open 148 million made 417 million domestic 1.3 billion worldwide where will this lie here um it's definitely not going to reach jurassic world <laughs> numbers that's not happening um maybe not even fallen kingdom numbers i think it'll be a bit a bit <laughs> below fallen kingdom i think somewhere in the range of 130 and 140 i think is achievable for this movie i think that's realistic it wouldn't be bad i mean it would still be a smash hit i mean it would still easily surpass you know jurassic park 3 and lost world like without like any effort <laughs> so yeah i think it'll be a, just a bit below Fallen Kingdom with like 130 to 140 million. I wouldn't be surprised if it did a bit better, but because, you know, this might be one of those critic-proof movies where critics say no, audiences say yay. I can see that happening here. So, yeah, I'm going to go with 130, 140 million domestic opening weekend. And then total... Psh, Maybe I don't know about four hundred million. That seems ambitious. Um, maybe I don't know three fifty to three seventy. I guess <laughs> I'm really guessing here. That's why I think it will hit. You know, for its domestic total, and then that's it for Jurassic World Dominion and the whole series apparently they're labeling this as the final movie which i seriously doubt <laughs> but we'll see but yeah so that's jurassic world dominion and that's it for this weekend only one movie but it's jurassic world so of course it would only be one movie 
I know this movie Block Party came out. I just, I just didn't make a video because I was just like, no, <laughs> there's no point. So, yeah. So this week's only Jurassic World Dominion, and next week I only have one movie to cover, just like this week. Lightyear. That should be an interesting one. <laughs> be Pixar's first theatrical release in two years. So that should be real exciting to talk about. Then after that, we got two movies. We're breaking the trend. <laughs> we got Black Phone and Elvis. And then we're going back to like one big movie a week. We got then July. We got Minions, Rise of Gru. And I guess Mr. Malcolm's List. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then July 8th, Thor Love and Thunder, which should no doubt be the last big movie of the summer. And then a lot of stuff coming out. July 15th, none of it I expect is going to do well. Then we got Nope on July 22nd. You got DC League of Super Pets, July 28th. And I guess Vengeance? That's a new one. And then August 5th, got Bodies, 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 Bullet Train, Easter Sunday. And then it's all downhill from there. So, yeah, stay, there's a lot coming out. And... I'm going to talk about all of it. So stay tuned for all these videos. But yeah, anywho, yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. Want to check out more videos like this? I've got a playlist on the homepage of all previous prediction videos I made this year. All the big movies. We're talking The Batman. We're talking Sonic 2. We're talking Doctor Strange 2. We're talking Top Gun Maverick. Cover them all. So you want to know my predictions on those or any others, go watch that playlist. Go do that. There's also the canceled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come up but didn't. I only talked about Jurassic World Dominion once. That was episode 22. Because this movie was supposed to come out in 2021. And then it got moved to 2022. So just one delay. One. That's it. <laughs> That was episode 22. I also talked about Soul that very same episode. So that should be easy to spot. So if you want to watch that episode, you can. It's a pretty early one, but it's episode 22. Uh, if you want to watch any of the other cancel episodes I've made, all 129 of them at the, up to this point, you can watch them, but binge them in chronological order from beginning to now. Highly encourage it. Uh, there's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. I know last week I did the May recap. June recap will come out in between Minions 2 and Thor Love and Thunder. Somewhere within those two movies, my June recap will come out. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos I made on the channel, you can. You can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.